Hi, how's it going? So, I've done a bit of fiddling about in the last three weeks since I posted. I didn't want to have you guys sitting there watching me fumbling through command lines and trying to figure out how the heck to turn things on. So, uh, I've skipped all of that boring stuff and I thought we would pick up today where I'm at and see how much we can get, take those next steps together. My SSP is up and running, uh, although it is mightily pissed off because the switch is powered down in the hub. And uh, with five Ethernet ports, it's busy throwing up errors about uh, all of the Ethernet ports having cable and link issues. Anyways, I really appreciate all of the feedback and the comments. I think it's fairly clear that a lot of people would like to log into these machines, which is exciting, makes me feel like um, I'm not the only one who would think that was cool. So I will organize that somehow. Uh, I'm thinking at the moment that I'll get a um, static IP address at the house and uh, get some DNS entries set up and organize a date uh, kicked off with a YouTube video or something like that so you can see what will be hooked up and we'll run it from there. Maybe I'll install one of my old Telnet talkers and we can yatter through that. Uh, I also discovered uh, accidentally that I have hit 3,000 subscribers, which it's been nine years, nine years, probably, uh, but it still blows my mind that everybody else, 3,000 everybody else, is, seems to think this is as cool as I do. So, hello everybody, thank you very much. Uh, do continue commenting, even when I'm idle, I'm on almost every single day checking messages and things like that, at least checking the comments on the videos because YouTube doesn't notify us of private messages. Uh, so, you know, if you want me, drop me a message, I'm around. Um, I wanted to also say hello to some of my personal friends who it turns out are watching my YouTube channel. Uh, Jason, the other Jason, I'll let you two decide who came first there. Uh, multiple Daves, uh, my friend Dave in New York, my other friend Dave in Virginia, uh, all of these people that it's really nice to know that my own personal friends who are probably have less excuse because they know exactly what I'm like uh, still are on there and say hello and niggle me now and then about how I haven't done anything. Anyways, let's start with plugging in the E10K and we will get some noise going. So we'll start at the other side of the machine. This is the front or the back depending on how uh, annoyed you are with that description. You can see that I have the machine pretty much completely empty, aside from one of the uh, center plane boards. We've got our 19 inch rack, the D240, and then I've got a couple A1000s up here. We'll start with plugging in the big 50 amp lines. One, two, and then my power strip, which will bring up the D240 and the hubs in front. And now the uh, hub and the D240 is up and running. We'll bring the rest of the machine on, or at least part of it. Start with let's see, the waiting lights on the AC input boxes. We'll bring up the power supplies. And then the two main fan tray sets. The lights on the trace come on, and then the center plane support board and the control board. And then we'll bring on the first three of the system boards. Okay, and now we are waiting as the two systems find each other, and you should hear the fans spool down a little. Right now we are watching the SSP's monitor messages file. And there they go, the two machines are now in synchronization. And so we should be able to
So this is as much of the system board is up and running right now. You'll see that the housekeeping, which is the HK voltages, all look good. But the main voltages, the 33 BDD, the cores, things like that, are all set to nothing because the main system is actually still powered down at prison. So we showed the system fans. And so now if we fire up the graphical view of the system, which is, oops, host view. There it goes. So we have the center plane support boards, the control boards, only the side zero is up right now. It knows that there are three system boards that have power, the rest of them are dark. And then we have um, interfaces to the reports that we've already got. So we can do a power on, and we'll do system board zero. in green lights and we can do some of the wrist and we're going to bring on system boards one and two and so you can see it's found the three system boards and the individual processors. Each board's got four processors, four gigs of RAM. We now have our buses. We've got the high-end address buses, the two data buses, and then the low-end address buses. And now we can try and bring the system up. First, we need to identify, whoops, which domain we're starting. So in this case, we're gonna start star 50, which is just, three, just these three system boards. And we do a bring up. I'm going to re rearrange screens here. So we can see what he's doing. Yeah. Oh, oopsie daisy. Wow, oh, silly rabbit. Let's try that again. And that'll bring up the center plane support board, which uh, and configure the center plane and bring up all of the buses, which I kind of forgot. There's the board. All right, let's try this again. Individual domains are configured in a bunch of files on the ECSP, which has the list of hardware that's included, system boards, things like that, as well as um, any blacklist items. For example, if you know that one of the ISBUS slots on the mezzanine board is bad on one of the system boards, you can blacklist that slot and say when the system comes up, make sure never to include that in the initial system configuration and things like that. Yes, I would like you to configure the center plane. Now remember, 
last time I mentioned that the center plane is optimized based on the current configuration and the state of the machine. This is what this is doing here. Hopefully the entirety of the center plane is in functioning order. And the H post starts sending the power on self tests to all of the individual components. So now it should start cycling through all of the internal tests. So the E-Cache RAM is the RAM that is on board the system, uh, the CPU modules I believe. So that's probably a hard fail on that CPU. So 0 0.1 means system board 0 and CPU 1 since it starts at 0, 0. So this CPU should be inoperative. doing a reconfiguration of the CPUs on board 2 and the second one on board 0. So I believe 23.1 identifies precisely which DIM is bad on processors or system board zero. So using this information we can identify which DIM is bad and simply replace it. But for now what we'll do is we'll let the entire system come up and identify all the things that have failed. And all of this data is logged and so we can come back after the fact, identify all of the failed components and swap them out and hopefully the ones that we replace them with work better. The LARB is the local address arbiter, and this is the bus arbiter that is on the system board as opposed to the GARB, which is the general address arbiter, I believe, which is the one that's on the center plane. Oh my goodness, all sorts of unhappy RAM. DIM 1.1.1, bit 71, that identifies the slot number, 101. 135 and there is a map somewhere this is this map that I was looking for which identifies each of the sticks and then the banks and their ID numbers so using these things here from the system service manual I can identify which items have failed to replace them. I also spotted that uh, G is global not general address arbiter. So this is the configuration of the center plane there and this number does mean something. Here we go. So the center plane's now fully come up. Each of the buses is in working state. And now we're running the boot process. The Netcon server is started. So OBP is the open boot prom. Ooh, gracious. Un unhappy. Mmm. Oh no, wait, I lie, I lie. Because the system isn't fully booted, I think most of these CPUs should be reading offline. So the OBP is the boot prompt helper, and then the Netcon server is what connects the SSP to the virtual um, prom, which we can fire up here, Netcon tool. There we go. And we connect. And we should get open boot. Oops, wrong system.
so if we we should find our so there's the Q logic and then there should be the FAS and that should locate the D240 which will have two internal SCSI drives, the uh, tape drive, the DAT and the DVD-ROM drive. There's all of our CPUs have come online now. This is this old one that we said was not in a healthy state so we knew this was not going to be good. So we have 11 working CPUs which is pretty freaking exciting. And here is our internal disks. Good stuff. Hmm, what next? I have loaded my Solaris 9, no, sorry, my Solaris 10 DVD in the drive. And so if I type this ridiculously long and convoluted this bus address, if I am lucky, the Solaris installer will fire up. And a nice little display here. I was hoping it would give us RPM, but I guess it doesn't. System temperatures. Ooh. Hot diggity. QFE0 is the only one that's actually plugged into anything. Although it's not plugged into my DHCP network. The Happy Meal Ethernet on the fast Ethernet, sorry, the fast SCSI card. And now it begins. Mm. All right, I'm going to start this install and I will catch up with you in a bit. So, God help me, we're off and running. What I found interesting was the Solaris 10 DVD knows that this is an E10K that has a front-end SSP. It knows that Nick Contool is running or something like that because it popped up and said, please give me the IP address of your SSP, which was not on my public network, so I had to give it a uh, MAC address if the NVRAM is croaked on it and get it on the network, at which point it's off and running. Well, this is probably going to take a while. Well, I will be damned. So we're several hours on. I wasn't expecting it to be that easy, which means something's going to blow up in the future. Uh, I've noticed my shirt has changed. I wandered away as Solaris was installing and did soccer practice with my team. Probably pulled a muscle and I'm practically crippled because I'm old. And I keep forgetting that I'm old. So, we have a machine that is Solaris installed. It is at a point where I can log into the game. This is one of these things where you never actually expect to get this far. I mean, you kind of hope you will. But that the hardware works well enough, even with all of the spares that I've got, 
to get a ten million dollar supercomputer up and running and install it in OS. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to cut it here, but there's a lot to do. Obviously, we have some hardware that we need to deal with. The processor is bad. We've got a bunch of dims that are bad. So I need to track those down and replace those. And then I need to see if I can figure out how to expand the domain. Because three system boards into our processors is kind of cool. It would be really nice to have an entire half of the system, eight system boards, with 32 processors up, 32 gigs of RAM. So we'll take it to one step at a time, see what we can get what we've got fixed, and then move on to seeing if we can get the rest of the system up, expand it to But anyways, thank you very much for watching. As always, I appreciate the comments, I truly do. And I will organize a way to get you guys into the system shortly. A couple of weeks. Three, four, five. And let you guys see what I can see. Thank you very much. You take care of yourself. Adios.